Speaking of the Browns, uh, the Raiders at the Browns. Uh, this line opened up. Uh, Browns minus three. It's down to two and a half. Lots of public money on the Raiders. So this is a public underdog alert. Uh, there are the public uh, is on the Raiders. Uh, so who do you like in this game? So I'm glad to hear that they're a public dog because I'm on the Browns right now. This is one of my favorite games of the week from a matchup standpoint because something has to give here. The Browns lead the league in takeaways. I think they have 14 on the year. And the Raiders have only thrown like two interceptions. They have a bunch of fumbles too. But Derek Carr has been one of, you know, surprisingly the most efficient quarterbacks in the league. And I'll just, I'll admit I was very low on Carr coming into the year and he has performed admirably and very well despite, you know, I don't think they have a true defined number one receiver right now, and he's doing a really great job with that. Um, but I, I think that the Raiders offense has played well, but their defense is just so bad. Uh, they, they've they not been able to cover anyone or stop the run at all. Um, I, I think that this game might end up being close. It could be a back and forth shootout. And I think a lot of people see, oh, Odell Beckham Jr., he's, he's out for the year now. Baker's going to be without one of his top weapons, and Austin Hooper's probably out with the – appendix injury too or the emergency appendectomy rather um but baker played without odell the whole game against the Bengals and still got his team the win and still dropped what 37 points on them and got the cover so i think that this raiders defense profiles similarly to the Bengals and that they could easily move the ball on them and they could probably run the ball better too with kareem hunt in this game than they did last game so I think if, if you're talking about getting the ball in Kareem Hunt's hands, getting the ball to Jarvis Landry, and, you know, they have Harrison Bryant and David Njoku at tight end who have played very well, and Rashard Higgins had over 100 yards, and apparently his nickname is Hollywood, which I didn't know. So <laughs> there's your info for the week. But I think the Browns offense gets this job done. I do think it's going to be close. But if we're under three points on, on under three point spread on this one, I like the Browns for a couple units. And with it being a public dog, I'm even more uh, happy with this pick. I feel like everyone's nickname's Hollywood. Like, can we get some differentiation <laughs> here? Like Skid Row or uh, Camden, New Jersey. I think those would be better nicknames. Um, I, I agree with with uh, what you said. Like, I mean, Baker Mayfield moved uh, the ball very well against the the Bengals. Like, granted, it was the Bengals, but it's not like the Raiders have a better defense or anything. It's not, it's not a step up in in uh, in difficulty at all. Uh, so, and the Beckham injury, I feel like, has created some line value because the advanced spread on this game was Browns minus four. And now it's two and a half. So it moved uh, through uh, uh, the top key number and also like a minor key number as well with four. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I think that the, the Browns are the right side for sure. I, I, and plus the Raiders, they, they played such a tough game against the Buccaneers. Um, travel to the East Coast, they're playing an early game. I know that the uh, West Coast team playing on the East Coast has been, uh, it used to be a great trend to like to pay, to paid, but like, uh, those the, the West Coast teams have, have done so much better on the East Coast recently. Like the the Rams uh, with Sean McVay, they have a great track record. Uh, the Niners with Kyle Shanahan and the Seahawks with Pete Carroll. Like all three of those teams have done well on the East Coast. Uh, John Gruden has not done well. He's two and six against the spread in, on East Coast games in the early start time. So he hasn't figured it out. Uh, maybe he will. Like who knows? Uh, but I, I think that's another reason to go with the Browns. So I, yeah, I like the line value a lot. And plus, fading the public dog is is just always it's almost always going to be a winning uh, formula. So yeah, I like the Browns as well. I wonder what it is about that trend that John Gruden just like hasn't figured out how to do that. I wonder. Those three coaches that you mentioned are kind of, obviously they have some new age thinking and Gruden's a little bit more old school, but I wonder if they all have some sort of program where it's like, all right, we're playing on the East coast this week. Like we're going to get up earlier for practice and just start treating it that way. You get your circadian rhythm in line before the game longer before the game. So you're not tired later in the week. I don't know. This is just be spitballing ideas, but I would assume it has something to do with that. I think so too. Um, I think they have, they have, they figured something out, right? And Gruden hasn't. Um, one of the worst coaches of all time uh, playing on the East Coast is Mike Holmgren, uh, who is a, is a very good coach, right? He was three and 13 against the spread in early start games. Like, just awful. Like, he didn't get it. And Gruden, uh, he coached under Holmgren. So uh, maybe, maybe they didn't, that, that whole uh, system hasn't worked out very well. Like, maybe if Andy Reid, his next job is on the West Coast, maybe he'll do poorly as well on, on uh, East Coast games. Who, kn who knows? I, I don't know. Um, I, it'll be, I, I'm, I, I would love to know what McVeigh, Shanahan, and Carroll have figured out. Like, uh, I would love to learn, like, why. Uh, they're so much better than the other teams on the East Coast, but who knows?